that during this time that we're experiencing this coronavirus threat, that the pastors of this church have been taking turns sharing devotion with our church community to give encouragement, support, and inspiration in this trying time. As we are quarantining our homes, keeping our social distance from each other and avoiding contact in groups to stem the spread of this, this virus, you, if you're like me, occasionally you just got to get out of the house. It's times like this that I just go for a walk to lessen my cabin fever and to get some exercise. And when I go on walks, I, I like to listen to podcasts, and usually podcasts of sermons. And this past week, I was listening to a sermon that was preached on the previous Easter Sunday. And the minister had a wonderful illustration of the power of the resurrection using an illustration of ancient Japanese form of artwork called kintsugi. That's how it looks like, which literally means golden joining. It's an essentially a way to repair broken pottery by creating a new piece of art. The, the legend is that a 15th century Japanese shogun accidentally broke his favorite ceramic tea bowl and needed to have it repaired. Well, today we would just ship it off to the, the manufacturer to have something uh, that was broken and to have it repaired. Back then, they would uh, broken valuable pottery would be sent to China to have it repaired. So that is what the shogun did. However, upon its return, the shogun wasn't happy to find that it had been mended together with unsightly metal staples. So he turned to a local Japanese craftsman to have it repaired. And what this craftsman did was amazing to repair it. He, he, he mixed 21 karat gold into an adhesive glue and put the tea bowl back together. Maybe kind of looked something like this. The Japanese shogun was overwhelmed. The remade bowl was exponentially more valuable than the original bowl. And the bowl became more beautiful after it had been broken and repaired. And as you can see where it was broken, this piece of ceramic that was glued together by this gold adhesive. And thus, the Japanese technique of artwork called kintsugi was born. And it's through brokenness that an ordinary piece is turned to something more valuable and precious. You know, this minister's sermon was, was comparing the ancient practice to Jesus' resurrection at Easter. The true value of a kintsugi bowl doesn't begin until it's broken or dropped. And the true value of Jesus didn't begin until the moment he was nailed to the cross. The grace of God turned what the people thought was an itinerant rabbi into one with the life-bearing message of hope, salvation, and eternal life. Being one who is a visual person and enjoys a good sermon illustration, th this spoke to me, and I, I have to file this one away for a future Easter sermon. But as I began to reflect more on this story, I think it speaks to us today and what we're enduring in this pandemic. You can say that we are broken, we are shattered, we are suffering through this painful ordeal. Many are struggling with their sanity, their finances, their endurance, and their health. We are broken and need to be put back together. But did you ever think that when the virus threat is finally ended, we will emerge from this transformed, stronger, more valuable, more precious in our own unique way than we were before this time, just like the Kintsugi bowl? Through our suffering, we are made stronger. Before this pandemic, we could say that we were we were people who were fearful, in despair, finding little hope in the world, and then afterwards, we will be transformed to people who are faithful, trusting in the power of God, and radiating the hope that we have through Jesus Christ. And that question all of us have today is, when will this threat be over? When will it subside? When will our suffering end? When will we can go back to normal? It is remarkable how a scripture written a couple thousand years ago, excuse me, a couple, yeah, a couple thousand years ago, speaks to us today. The Apostle Peter, in his writing in the book of 1 Peter, he's writing to a people who are in despair and finding little hope in their existence. In the first verse of 1 Peter, the Apostle Peter greets his readers as those exiles of the dispersion, those who have been dispersed across the land, those of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Can we relate to this, those of us who feel like exiles and, and dispersed ourselves, exiles of the dispersion in Winter Park, in Maitland, in Orlando, Oviedo, and Longwood? Peter is writing to those who are suffering. 
And what does he say about their suffering? Well, first of all, he writes to them as he would write to us. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then he speaks to their suffering. In verse chapter 1, verse 6, he writes, Even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials, your suffering will be for a little while. In our present time, it sure seems like we're in, the, in this for the long run. Yet all suffering has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And in all things, there is hope. Easter Sunday was a bit different this year. It wasn't the same as we viewed those Easter services, those wonderful Easter services in our homes. And many of us could only be with family. Even the Easter egg hunts were canceled or scaled back during this time. Yet no matter the circumstances, the message of hope doesn't change. Things may not have been the same this past Easter, but the message of hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the same. The message of hope cannot be quarantined. Through this virus threat, we may be broken, shattered, suffering. We may be suffering and struggling through this painful ordeal. Yet we know that suffering can transform us. and We can have hope and new life through the life-giving resurrection of Jesus Christ. I close with these words from 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 9 to 10. These words that speak to us even today in our time. Be steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the grace of the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you, and he will do for you too.